Theatre Vonic presents Old Hobbs Xmas Adventure. Written by Chris Meekings. A big dolly. Yes, dear. Not the small dolly. No, dear. Styles, hurry up and don't drop anything. Oh, yes, Mum. And a new dress. Like a princess dress with a crown and a cot for the dolly. Oh, Lord. Not a ruddy cot, too. But you've already got a dolly cot. The one we bought you for your birthday. And you never play with it. But that cot is too small. And it's blue. The new dolly will be a girl, and she'll need a pink one. Yes, dear, I see. Uh, Styles, are you getting all of this? Hanging on every word, Mum. Good. Carry on, Emily, dear. And I want horses and ponies and a paint set with an easel and lots of paint. You've got a paint set, Emily. But they're all dried up and crusty. I want new ones. Shiny ones. And they want, um, uh, a pretty coat. Just like that one there. Styles, go and buy that girl's coat. Oh, it's always me, ain't it? Now, what else would you like for Christmas? Um, I want, uh, a story. Styles, a story for Emily. Yes, Mum. Let me just put these presents down first. Now, once upon a time, there were three sisters, and they lived at the bottom of a treacle well, and their names were Olga, Marsha, and Irene. No, no. I want a story from him. Who? Him. Dearest, that is just a smelly vagrant uh, talking to a plant. But you don't want to go near him. But his sign says he's selling stories. I want one of his stories. And so, the prince married the farmer's daughter, and they lived and loved happily ever after. There you go, my green friend. Do you feel better about growing up into a tree now? Well, sit there and have a think about it. Ah, oh, Mr. Fly, I believe it's time for your story. What's that? Oh, no, no charge. You give what the story deserves, no more. So Come along, time? Emily. We need to be going. Daddy will be waiting. But I want a story. Emily. Story! All right. Anything for my little muffin. And they caused a real problem. A story. Now, my man. A story for my little cherub. of dandruff, as we call it. Excuse me. And they made the Excuse me? Very Excuse me. I'm sorry for their rudeness, Mr. Fly. We shall finish our story later. Yes, yes, there you go. Till later, my friend. Now, lady, you wish for a story? Yes, my daughter wants a story from you. What if I don't wish to give her a story? Mummy, make him give me a story. I want a story. There. You heard, my little darling, she wants a story. And we all know what she wants. What was that, Styles? Oh, nothing, Mum. You wish for a story? Yes, 
I wish for a story, and you are a story seller. So, how much? How much? Yes, how much for a story? Ooh, more than you can afford. Mummy, I want him to tell me a story. Make him tell me a story. I want it, I want it, I want it! Yes, yes, dear. I assure you, money is no object. Not when it comes to my little Emily. What is the price for the story? Ah, now that is a different question. What is the price of a story? The price is your whole life, and it shall be given at the end of the tale. What? The price for a story is my life? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I was going to say... The price for the story is all of your lives, and you shall give them at the end of the story, if it pleases you. So, let me get this straight. The price for the story is my life, my daughter's life, and Styles's life. And we give them to you after you've told the story, but only if we want to. Yes. Very well. I accept. Yay! Story, story, story! Mom? Don't worry, Styles. After the story, we simply won't pay him. Honestly, our lives for a silly little story. Very well. The deal is struck. Now, little girl, you want a story? A story for Christmas? I have such a story. A unique story. A story which shall not be told to anyone else. It is not the story you want, but it will be the story you need. This is your story. My story? Yes. You shall be a player in it, and your mother, and your man here. They shall all be in it. Prepare yourselves. Listen, I'm not sure about this. Not sure at all. You, my lady, shall be the main part. Oh, <laughs> really? Yes, yes. Are you ready? But, uh, 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 I don't know the words. No, oh, don't worry. They will come to you. When the time comes, you'll know what to do. Now, I shall begin the story. The time is immaterial. The place is hell. So it was bound to happen eventually. Children can be fuzzy when it comes to spelling, and parents can be inattentive to their children and their wish lists. But every action has a consequence, and all wish lists are delivered even if the letter never leaves your writing table. This is the essence of magic and belief, and Christmas is a time for magic and belief. It was Christmas Eve, and old Hob, the devil to you and me, sat by his pool of lava and surveyed his domain. Are you sure about this? Yes. Just do what comes naturally. Let the words flow through you. Oh, very well. Old Hob surveyed his, uh, her, domain of the dam. She had been trapped here since the beginning of time, cast out of heaven for leading a rebellion of angels against God. I prefer the term aggressive management restructuring. Pardon? Oh, um, <clears throat> I prefer the term aggressive management restructuring, cloth ears. Oh, very well. Cast out of heaven for an aggressive management restructuring request which was denied by a deity with a limited omniscient vision for the future. And that little stuck-up Archangel Michael. And the Archangel Michael. There, is that better? Much. Carry on. Now, as I was saying, it was that one Christmas Eve... Oi! We don't do that here. Do what? The Sea Day. Don't you? No, nobody... Look... 
This is hell, the abode of the damned and tormented. It would hardly look good to have tinsel, would it? We can't have souls cast here for all eternity singing God rest ye merry gentlemen, can we? The whole sulphurous ambiance would be ruined. There is one thing you can count on. No one in hell ever celebrates... Enter. Stage right. The demon. Crabby. Crabby? Emily. Oh, sorry. Merry Christmas, my liege. Crabby, what have I told you about the sea day? Oh, um... You said if I ever mentioned Christmas again, you would make me wear cast iron trousers which were filled with rabid wolverines. Exactly. Off you go. I can hear the clanking and the screams now. Yes, my liege. This was Krabby, devoted servant to old Hob. He... she? Both the devil and I are former angels and are therefore exempt from gender-based honorifics. You may refer to my master however you wish. They or them will serve for me. Crabby, stop talking to that storyteller. You don't know where he's been. Yes, my honoured prince. Crabby, too, had been cast down from heaven for supporting Lucifer in their... aggressive management takeover action. Before, they had been a beautiful angel, majestic, with wings of purest gold. Now, Crabby was a broken, but immensely loyal demon. They were Old Hob's truest friend, from their horned head to their warty bottom, which they would have thrust willingly into said wolverine trousers if they hadn't remembered why they came here in the first place. Oh, my liege. Yes, Crabby? You've got mail. Mail? I've got mail? Yes. No one sends me mail. Not since I was entered into the Reader's Digest prize draw that one time. Oh, they were surprised when you turned up to claim that holiday in Mauritius. Ah, yes. You know, I don't think I'll ever tire of hearing executives screaming. (laughs) Fun times, my lord. Yes, they suddenly were. Now, what's all this about mail? Give it here. This had better not be another menu from a kebab shop. I don't mind kebabs, but rotisserie tends to lose its appeal in hell. Now, what's this say? Dear Satan, for Christmas... Oh, there's that word again. Crabby? Yes, sir? I've made a new decree. Another one, Lord? Yes, another one. I do hope it's better than the last one. Last one? Which last one? Well, the one where you decreed that no soul should go unpunished. Oh, yes, that one. Well, that was hardly my fault. That was just a typographical error. Yes, Master. And now, because of it, no soul goes unpolished. Hmm, I really should do something about that. It's embarrassing watching my minions running around with little rags and furniture polish. However, this new decree is better. From this moment on, Christmas shall be spelled with an X. An X? Oh, Dark One? Yes, an X. I'll make it altogether more demonic. Now then, dear Satan, for Xmas, I would like... A dolly, a scooter. Oh. Crabby! Uh, Crabby, are you sure this letter is for me? Quite sure, my liege. Look, it's addressed to you. It doesn't strike you as odd that children are asking me for Xmas gifts, does it? Where did you get these letters? The infernal wind blew them to me. Ah, the old infernal wind. And you say they were blown here? Yes, Lord. Crabby, you great steaming nit, these aren't for me. No? No, it's a mistype. They should be for Santa. 
These should have been delivered to the North Pole, not down here. There are fire hazard down here. You know we did away with paper ages ago. All the demons now have blackberries. Very well, my lord. I shall see that they are delivered at once. That's hardly demonic, Crabby. See the throne in the endless pit of despair at once. <laughs> oh. oh, that isn't very nice, my liege. Nice? Nice? Of course it's not very nice. I am the devil. Nice isn't really in the job description. Tail, horns, and evil laugh, yes, but not nice. But even so, burning children's Xmas wish lists, it seems a bit... Beneath you? Oh. What's wrong? Oh. It's the time of year. It always gets me down. It's not fair, you know. What isn't, Master? Everyone gets their Xmas wishes and I... don't. Oh. What is your wish? I want what I've always wanted. To get back into God's good graces and be allowed to return to heaven. I'm fed up of being down here. Everyone blames me for everything. Whenever anything bad happens, humans blame me. Well, you are the Prince of Darkness, my master. But does that make it all my fault? Technically, yes. No! No, it does not! I am a victim of circumstance. One little aggressive management restructuring against God, and I am the fall demon for every accident, bad thought, and drunken mistake. Well, it's not fair. And you, Crabby, you with your loathsome visage and warty posterior, you too are cursed in this way. Do you remember being an angel? Oh, yes, my liege. I remember the golden sky, the beautiful wings, the wonderful choral music, the glory of basking in the gaze of God, the certain knowledge of his goodness, and being loved. And then what happened? Man, that's what happened. Poxy little shaved ape comes along and suddenly we're not the only loved things. Oh no. And then man gets a soul. A soul! Do we get a soul? No. We get constant adoration duty. We get to watch the gates of heaven. We get to sing inane choral works. The bald baboon gets a soul. And me? I make one little suggestion about how ever so slightly unfair this was, and... You led a rebellion. Uh, well, yes. Pitted angel against angel. Granted, but... You called God a dozy plonker. My words may have been poorly judged, but I think you'll agree the punishment does not fit the crime. I want back into heaven! And a little idea has just blistered in my brain as to how to do that. Go on, my lord. Crabby, let me ask you a question, and please feel free to answer it as truthfully as possible. Very well, Master. Do people like me? Well, I like you, Master. No, Crabby, I know you like me. You are what is known as a sycophant, Crabby. What I'm asking is, do people like me? Other people. Other people like you? Of course they do, Master. They love you. Who wouldn't love you? You with your furry goat legs and winning, charming personality. Crabby. No, Master. They hate you. They hate your rotten guts from your horned head to your forked tail. They hate you. They hate you with a passion that's normally reserved for sticky things found under sofas. The current government is better liked than you. Indeed, Crabby. They hate me. But what about... Santa. It's only a couple of rearranged letters difference between us. Oh, Santa. Everyone likes Santa. He's the jolly fat man who gives people presents and grants their Christ Xmas wishes. Everyone likes him. Even God? Especially God. Crabby, 
What do you suppose would happen if I were to grant people's Xmas wishes? People would start to like you. Well done, Krabby. Whoever said you were an idiot, eh? (laughs) Well, you did. Several times yesterday and again this morning. Krabby, if I grant people's wishes, then they will have to like me. And if humans like me, then God will like me again. And then he will forgive me. We can get out of this stale, sulfurous pit of the damned and back up to heaven where we belong. Oh, that would be nice. But, my lord, what about Santa? Won't he be delivering presents this Xmas Eve? Don't you worry about Santa. It's all part of the plan. (laughs) The devil placed his arms around his servant, and they disappeared to the land of the living. And now, an advertisement on behalf of the modern woman known as Honey Bee McKenna. You may know her dulcet tones from theatophonic productions such as Bacchus Reborn and Dungeons and Dentures. In addition to mumbling and warbling into a microphone, this plucky gal has dived into the musical stylings of disco and house music. You can listen to her excursions in disc jockeying at www.mixcloud.com forward slash honeybee McKenna or find more information at facebook.com forward slash honeybee McKenna. What a racket. I'd rather listen to Perry Como myself. For that matter, if you enjoy live musical sessions from talented independent artists, you may be interested in the endeavor known as Not the Main Stage. There are many sessions to watch already, all recorded from the safety of each artist's home or recording studio and broadcast into your family's living room with modern technology. There will be a new event announced shortly, so be sure to like and follow them on your social media platform of choice. And now, back to your scheduled programming. We are now in the bedroom of little Lizzie Gibson. Lizzie is a normal seven-year-old girl. She goes to school where she likes geography because she gets to color in the maps. She goes swimming after school and has a chocolate bar after her lessons. She likes chips and her daddy and is also missing. She's not in her bed. Where is she? It's Christmas Eve. Lizzie should be asleep, dreaming of all her presents tomorrow. Satan, what have you done? Master, are you sure about this? Yes, of course I'm sure. Now get on with it. All right then. (laughs) Master! Master, I'm stuck! I can't get through this last bit. Pull your tail in! Come on, tuck it up behind your ears. It's not my tail, it's my... Ah! Crabby, what was that? Painful for me. My word, there is a draught in here. Crabby shuffled their way out of the fireplace and examined the living room. Chris... <sighs> Xmas decorations were strewn about the room, and a stocking hung limply from the chimney. Knock, knock. Knock, knock. <gasps> Who's there? Cohen. Cohen who? Cohen answered the door. Oh. That's got to be my liege. 
No one else would have the nerve to try an old joke like that one. Ah, there you go, my prince. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. My plan is coming to Yogi Apples. Yogi Apples, my lord? Bear fruit. <laughs> You're happy, aren't you, my lord? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Soon, Crabby. Soon I'll be back in heaven. <laughs> my lord, I'm not sure about this. Not sure? Not sure about what? Or that this is the right way to go about getting back into God's good books. Uh, take what you did to this little girl, Lizzie, for example. What? I gave her what she wished for. She asked for a unicorn and I gave her the best real world example. You transported her to the rhino house in London Zoo? Well, they kind of like unicorns. You left her crying? Yes. In her nighty. So? With no socks on. Her feet will be frozen. She'll catch her death of cold. She'll be fine. I left her standing in something warm, and those rhinos look like the caring types. Anyway, that's one wish granted, and me one step closer to heaven. Oh! Oh! Listen! As Crabby and Lucifer listened, they could hear very faintly the sound of sleigh bells. Is that? Yes! Santa! Ha! Now, Crabby, are you ready? Yes, Lord. You've got your frying pan? Yes, my liege. Come on, then. Let's hide. The two fiends hid as the soft sound of sleigh bells was joined by the heavy clop-clop of hoofbeats on the roof. Then, they heard the sound of someone large and jolly getting out onto the roof. Ho, ho, ho! And as they watched, they saw a large, fat man magically squeeze down the chimney and step out into the room. Dressed in traditional yuletide red, with a large sack of presents and a jolly festive beard, Santa stood before them. He was ruddy and good-natured. His eyes twinkled with a magical kindness. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. Oi, you stole that last bit. It's from the night before Christmas. Come on, this story has enough similarities with another nightmarish Xmas story already. Only new stuff from now on. Satan? Santa? Master? Crabby? Oh, what? What are you doing? Unhand me, you little demon! That's it. That's it, Crabby. Tie him up nice and tight. Maniacal laugh. I win. I win! I win, I win, I win, I always win. By a lot. There, Master. Excellent. Now, cut the knot off and put it in your pocket so he can't untie himself. Done. <laughs> We've got him. We've got him. You fiends, why? I'm going to work my way back into heaven by giving people what they want at Xmas. All the presents for all the children will be from me. I shall give them everything they've ever wanted. Then everyone will love me. <laughs> what? You can't do that. You can't give people everything they want. Why not? It's what you do. No. No, I give them some of what they want. If you give children everything they want, then you'll spoil them. Rubbish. Come on, Crabby. Strip him. Master? Strip him down to his long johns. I'll put his clothes on and then we'll be off. I won't let you. You can't. Enough from your mince pie masher, tubby. Crabby, pacify him on the head with the frying pan. Are you sure, my liege? Do get on with it, Crabby. If you hurry up, 
I'll let you drink the sherry in all the houses. And if I don't hurry up? Then I'll shove red hot chestnuts up your nose. Oh. Crabby apologised to Santa. Sorry, old fella. Merry Xmas. And then bashed him over the head. Oh, my nut! Well done, Crabby. Help me lift him into the next room where we shall strip him. <laughs> Everything's coming up, Lucifer! Was the night before Christmas, Xmas, and all through the land, Satan gave out presents just like she planned. She gave to the just and the unjust alike, for this girl a pony, for that boy a bike. She gave them their presents without thought of their deeds. She gave them their presents without thought of their needs. She wished just to give them their deepest desire, so that she might escape hell's damnation and fire. But the plan of the Almighty, no one can know. And so we pick up the story at the house of Old Joe. Here, yeah. are you sure about this? I mean, it's hardly fair. I haven't really had a part yet. Please, Mr. Styles. Take your place. But in the first half, I only had a few lines. And now you want me to play a sleeping man? Oh, do get on with it, Styles. Do not worry, Mr. Styles. We all have our parts to play, and your important part is coming up. Now, please, hop into bed. Oh, very well. But if I get bashed again, I shall be very upset. <laughs> Go on, Crabby. Down you go. Yes, my liege. And Crabby came down the chimney. They gazed around the room in wide-eyed wonder, staring at the new sparse surroundings. Dust danced in the moonlight and covered the bare surfaces. This was surely the room of the poorest of the poor. Then their eyes fell upon a small glass. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> oh, it's not easy, you know, being Santa's assistant. Friend. Crabby, do this! Crabby, do that! Crabby, I'm feeling bored. Have some underwear filled with angry wasps. Uh, take... Take this, for example. She says, Crabby, I'm going to be Santa, and you're going to drink all the sherry for me. <laughs> Little me, I'm a demon. Alcoholics have strange effects on demons. It makes us talkative. You know, I remember when Satan used to put on guises and go about in the world of men. Oh, oh those were good times. One of her favourites was transforming into a little wizened old man driving a car and then finding a busy roundabout and going round and round and round and round and round and round it very slowly, examining all the signposts and deciding it wasn't their turn off after all whilst continually indicating to turn left. <laughs> oh, it was amazing the amount of discord she sowed into the world with that one. And then there was the time that... Knock, knock. Who's there? Lenny. Lemmy who? Let me in or I'll fill your stomach with cannonballs. Speak of the devil. Excellent. Excellent. We're finally in. <laughs> what were you doing, Crabby? 
Reminiscing, my lord. The devil stared long and hard into Krabby's eyes. You're drunk, aren't you? You only get teary-eyed when you've been at the giggle juice. But, my lord, you told me to drink all the sherry. And we've been to over 500 million houses. 500 million houses? How long have we been at this? 15 minutes. 15 minutes? And you've had 500 million glasses of sherry? I don't think I should let you drive the sleigh anymore. <laughs> Enough of that, or I shall fill your intestines with marmosets. Now, where are we? We are in Alabama. Swing home, Alabama! A land of cotton and lynchings. I've had enough of this. You are way too chatty when you're drunk. Oh! What did you do? I replaced all the alcohol in your system with a burning desire to do my bidding. But I feel normal. I know. I told you. You're a sycophant. Ah, Alabama, eh? Hmm. Not been here in a while. You've been here before, Lord? Oh, yes. Many times. The Bible Belt is rich pickings for me on the corruption front. Naughty pastor's daughters, slightly dubious sermons, uh, you name it, they've done it on the Belt. 500 million houses down. Hmm. That's 500 million wishes granted. 500 million children now have me to thank. Just think of it. Think of all that adoration. Well, oh naughty one, I'm not sure every one of those was a good deed. No? Well... You remember all those aggressive ones? Which ones? Well, the ones who wanted guns for Xmas. Guns or swords or lightsabers. And one who wanted a spaceship. Well? You actually gave them real ones. So? Working ones. Your point being? Well, it's not safe. Safe? Safe? Of course it's not safe. But that's what they asked for. I'm giving the humans what they want. That's what will get me back into heaven. I'm not sure, my lord. Think of all the castles and new kingdoms you suddenly created to make children into princes and princesses. I fail to see what's wrong with that. Apart from all the subsidence it's caused, well, there are now whole tracts of Norwich which are underwater, weighed down by out-of-place Gothic architecture. I'm just giving the humans what they want. And anyway, it's not all presents for children. What about the adults? I've given them stuff too. True, my liege, but is it a really good idea to make everyone who's asked into a millionaire? It's... What they wanted. Yes, I know. But won't you have devalued the currency? If everyone has a million pounds, then won't the price of everything go up accordingly? No idea. Much like the Chancellor of the Exchequer, I'm not good with figures. Flaying, yes. Figures, no. What I'm trying to say, Lord, is these may be the things people want, but is it what they need? 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 Crabby, what are you talking about? Xmas is not about people's needs. It's about excess. It's about how much stuff you can get. It's about things, toys, presents, food. Oh? Well, it's just that I thought it was about the birth of... Don't say it. Don't say his name. You know I get very upset when you say his name. Well, I thought Xmas was about celebrating his birth. Whatever gave you that idea? Well, the whole Christ in Christmas... Xmas. Well, fine, all right, yes, it, it used to be about that. But people today, well, they don't really think of it in that way anymore. It's all about the toys and the day off work and the celebration, not about the meaning of the day. There isn't enough time to worry about meanings. People are too busy, busy with work, busy with life, 
busy with watching the X Factor to worry about what it all means. But, Master... Oh, shut up, Krabby! I have had enough. I don't know why you think I am even the teeny-weeny tiniest bit interested in what you have to say. Let me spell it out for you. I don't care. I don't care about your opinion. Let me give you an example. If I am about to drink from my cup and you suddenly see that someone has put a deadly, deadly douse of arsenic in it, I still wouldn't want your opinion on whether you think I should continue to drink my drink. If I am about to invest all my money in a company called Extremely Dodgy Investments and you see a news report saying people who invest with Extremely Dodgy Investments lose all their money, I still don't want your opinion. You are just my servant, and I don't care what you think. I don't care what you have to say. Just do what I tell you. Yes, Lord. What was that? I couldn't hear you. Yes, my Lord. Excellent. Now, what do we have here? This, my liege, is the house of old Joe. A wizened old prospector of Alabama. And what was it this mortal wanted for an Xmas wish? He wished to die rich, O oh, wicked one. And so he shall. Give him a sack of gold and release the mountain lion. Ah, yes. <sighs> so much better. Come along, Crabby. Yes, my lord. And the devil and Crabby took off up the chimney, away into the cold night air, leaving only old Joe, his sack of gold, a ravenous mountain lion, and some snowflakes behind them. Hey, 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 wait a minute. Well? Well, was that it? Was that all I had to do in this scene? Yes. I still haven't said anything. When do I get a part? Oh, do shut up, Styles. So what if you haven't said anything yet? This play is for myself and Emily. We just need you to make up the parts. Now go and get dressed for the next scene. I'm fair, that's what this is. I'm fed up with it, I am. Never a word of thanks. Making me dress up and I don't get to say anything. It's like I don't matter. Would you like to get to know more about the people behind Theatre Phonic, the writers, the actors and directors? Well, now you can. Our Patreon members have the opportunity to ask questions which our creatives will then answer, if I can get hold of them. Find out everything you want to know about the people behind the characters. Visit patreon.com forward slash theatrephonic for more information. That's patreon.com forward slash theatrephonic. On with the play. Bum. Bum. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the final part of our play, Scene 5. Later the same evening, a child's bedroom in Wales. Notice the strewn toys, the unmade bed and the smell of sticky sweets. The room is dark, bare and empty. No child sleeps in the bed. Enter. A demon dressed in green. <laughs> I swear those chimneys are getting thinner. Of course. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the six million mince pies you've eaten. Now hurry up and let me in. Are we not doing another knock-knock joke this time? Oh, all right. Knock-knock. Who's there? Isabel. Isabel who? Isabel out of order. Why do I have to keep knocking? Oh, that's more like it. Now, where are we? Wales, Lord. Ah, yes, of course. I smelled the hatred of the English and thought for a moment that we were in Scotland. 
I thought we'd been here already. Oh, well, we have, O oh, Horned One, but we missed one. Missed one? Yes, from the Naughty or Nice list. There's a list? Oh, yes, Lord, a Naughty or Nice list. Naughty or nice? Yes, Lord. It came with the suit when he ripped it off Santa. Crabby, and think very carefully before you answer. Have we been giving presents to just the nice? Well, the instruction said to give it to just the nice, but I thought about it and the grand diabolical scheme, and then I just started giving presents to everyone. It seemed the way you would want to do it. Well done, Krabby. <laughs> now, how on earth did we miss one? Not entirely sure, my dark prince. We went through everyone, and then at the end I went back to check, and we apparently missed this one. What's their name? Uh, Gabriel Sinclair. At the mention of the name, the devil went white. Well, pink. Who? Gabriel Sinclair. Oh, no! Hoodwinked! That's what we've been! Hoodwinked! Crabby, we're in trouble. Quick, run! But it was too late. There was a blinding flash from the hallway, and in stepped... Hello, Satan. Oh, ha, 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 Look, Crabby, uh, it's, it's Gabby. Ha, how are you, Gabby? Don't call me that. The angel Gabriel? No, Crabby, it's Gabby. Say, hello, Gabby. I told you, don't call me that. What, Gabby? Gabby. Gabby, 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 Gabby. G-A-B-B-Y. G-A-B-B-Y. Gabby. Is that all you've got? Snide remarks? It's kind of what I do. Possessing, tempting mortals, and snide remarks. To goody, goody angels. Oh, I am disappointed. I was expecting so much more. You're supposed to be the epitome of evil, and all you can do is make up bad nicknames. I could turn you into a slug. No, you couldn't. What happened to you? You were once the Morning Star. Don't you remember? The most beautiful of all the host. Now look at you, dressed in a stolen red suit. What have you done to yourself? What have I done? What have I done? I've done nothing except try to get home. I will go home. No, you won't. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, no, you won't. Oh, yes, I will. Oh, no, you won't. Enough! You silly archangel, you. This is not a pantomime. Yes, I will get back into heaven. My plan is perfect. Crabby, explain the plan. Crabby? Is that what you're called now? Your name was Azaneel once, remember? Azaneel? Oh, I haven't been called that in a long time. You were once beautiful too. Bright golden wings which shone in heaven's light and a glorious voice. Those are the things I remember about you. Do you remember? Oh, it was such a long time ago. I think I remember, but it's all so cloudy. Like mud cast into a little stream. You should remember. You were as an eel, not crabby. Why do you let him bully you? Why do you put up with it? Put up with it? You don't have to... Oh, yes, they do. They are fallen too. Cast down with me, aren't you, Crabby? Yes, Lord. Yes, they were. Cast down for my rebel... <clears throat> Slightly overzealous advice towards a potential management restructuring. Was it fair? Oh, no. My grievances went unheard. It hurt, Gabby. It hurt. We were cast aside. My punishment is for eternity, and that's a long time. Well, it's forever. And all I want is to go home. Is that too much to ask? 
a little justice? Justice. You corrupt and destroy anything you touch, warping it to your own purpose. Just look at what you've done to Christmas. Ah, ha ha ha. I think you'll find I haven't done anything to Xmas. Haven't done anything? Haven't done anything? You've caused widespread damage with your presence. Five hundred people are now presidents of the United States of America. Six thousand people are now married to Henry Cavill. That was Crabby. Lord! Shut up, Crabby. You gave little children flying cars. There have been numerous accidents with those already. Again, that was Crabby. You bashed Santa over the head with a frying pan. Now that one was definitely Crabby. Your plan, your ideas. Complete fabrication. Lies, slander and calumny. I utterly reject those claims. It's fake news. Fake news, I tell you. Fake news. Fake news? That's not even a real thing. Well, if it's good enough for my favourite president, then it's good enough for me. All I did was give people what they wanted. What they did with those things is not my fault. It doesn't matter. Giving everybody exactly what they want is the problem. Well, what's wrong with that? You just don't get it, do you? You don't see what's wrong with spoiling people and giving them what they want. You don't see the value in things. I'll have you know that all those gifts I gave out were of top quality and very expensive. All you can see is the price of things and the value of nothing. What does that even mean? You made no effort to give them. Made no effort? Made no effort? I travelled all around the world in one night. I'm absolutely knackered. Well then, tell me, what are those gifts worth? Well, most of them were very expensive. And what are they worth to the humans you gave them to? I just told you, you stupid trumpet blower. The castles are worth several million alone. Shouldn't they be worth more than money? Since they were a gift? I don't understand. Things have a value. A price. Why should they be worth more just because they were given? No. 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 I don't understand. Um. I. I think I might... Go on, as a Neil. Well, when a parent gives a gift to a child, or a friend gives a gift to another friend, then it means something more than the gift itself. What are you rabbiting on about, you cretin? Well, the gift is not only a thing, but it's a symbol. Oh, of course it is a thing, but uh, it's something more as well. It symbolises the love and the friendship itself. The gift says, here, I think about you. I spent time and effort to choose something for you. And no matter whether the gift cost a lot or not, presents show them that someone cares. Presents bind them together. And we... We missed that when we gave our presents, Lord. We did? Yes. We were so busy trying to get everyone everything. We forgot, or didn't know, to include the love. Crabby, you great green knit. We weren't the ones giving love. We were the ones supposed to be getting love. Remember the plan? But it doesn't work that way. Simply giving people what they ask for isn't what they want. They want someone to know them, to care for them, and then choose an appropriate gift. But I gave them what they want. They should love me. No, they shouldn't. What we gave was cold and empty and would inspire no love in them, just greed. What we did was wrong. And I'm really, really sorry. I, um... No, I don't understand. No, you never did. But it doesn't matter. The Heavenly Host has been hard at work on your trail and has put everything right back the way it should be. And you are now forgiven. <gasps> for... For... Forgiven? I... I'm... Forgiven? I can go home! I can go home! Finally! Finally, I can go home! <laughs> you misunderstand me, Satan. You are not forgiven. Crabby is... As a Neil, 
You may return to heaven with me. What? Listen, they are not Azaniel, they are crabby. And how can they be forgiven and not me? Because they understand. But they were with me all the time. They did all those terrible things that I did. They bashed Santa over the head with a frying pan. And they are repentant, so they are forgiven. As a kneel, shall we go? Shall we leave this pitiful thing to wallow in her pit? No, Krabby is returning to hell with me. Come on, Krabby, we're leaving. My lord, for many millennia I've been your loyal servant. I've supported you carried out your evil plans and helped you bring discord to the world. I have folded every single pair of your disgusting underpants. I held your hair back when you were sick and I tried really hard to be your friend. And you've been nothing but horrible to me in return. You call me names, you stick hot coals down my pants and you never listen to my opinion. And you make me do things that I don't want to do. Worst of all, you ate my slice of chocolate cake last week, and I was really looking forward to it. <sighs> I accepted it from you because I cared about you, and I couldn't remember it being any different. <sighs> but Gabriel has reminded me that I can be loved, and I don't deserve this punishment. Not any more. If I thought you could learn to improve, I would stay by your side and continue to be your friend, but I don't believe you can. I'm... I'm sorry. Oh! Gabby! I will get you for this! There will come a day when I shall see you bent at the knees in front of me, and on that day I will remember what you've said here, and I will show you the same mercy I was shown. Always an eye for an eye with you, isn't it? Goodbye, Satan. And with that, the two angels, for that's what they both were now, departed. Did you enjoy that, young miss? Yes, I did. Well, I for one am not happy. That was a stupid story. Stupid, Mom? Yes, stupid. My character did everything right, and yet she still got punished at the end. It wasn't fair. She gave out all those presents, and yet she didn't get into heaven. I tell you, if I gave out all those presents, I'd want everyone to be grateful too. And anyway, we asked for a story not to be put in a play. I'm not paying. That is as I expected. As I said at the start, you should only pay if you so wish. Ha! Well, I'm not. I'm not going to give you anything for that load of garbage. Right. Come along, Emily. We've got to be going. More shopping to be done, and your father will be home soon. Come along. Oh. Do hurry up and get changed styles, you idiot. Those wings look ridiculous. Sir? Hmm? Yes, little miss? I really enjoyed your story. And it spoke to me. I... I have not been good. I have been selfish and shallow and wrong. I wish to be better from now on. You... You can have my life, if you so wish. And mine, if I can have a better role in the next story. Thank you, both. I return them to you as a gift. Perhaps you will use them more wisely in the future. Remember, it is people who matter, not things. Fare you well, Mr. Stiles. Young Miss Emily. Mr. Stiles? Yes, Miss Emily? Can I help you carry some of the things? 
Thank you, Miss Emily, but it is my job. I will be fine. But thank you for asking. No, it seems to me that I have a lot of things. Back in the house, I mean. And I don't use most of them. Do you think we should give some of them away? To charities? There must be children who would need some of these toys. And some of my clothes, which I don't need. I think that would be a good thing to do. A very nice thing to do for others at Christmas. Come along, Miss Emily. Let's go. <laughs> well, what to do? What to do? Ah, you. Yes, you. I have a story for you. It's a story like no other. A unique story. A story which shall not be told to anyone else. It's not the story you want, but it is the story you need. Would you like a story? You've been listening to Old Hobbs Xmas Adventure, written by Chris Meekings, directed by Emmeline Brayfield, with Rebecca Danes as Emily and Crabby, Caitlin Howard as Mother and Satan, Rob Keeves as Styles, Santa, Old Joe, and Gabriel, and Henry Douthwaite as the storyteller. The music was performed by Amicantus Choir, led by Maddie Evans, and included. Sussex Carol, arranged by David Wilcox. Carol of the Bells, arranged by Jeff Funk. O Little Town, arranged by Ralph Vaughan Williams and Thomas Armstrong. Silent Night, by Franz Xaver Gruber, arranged by Maddie Evans. Candlelight Carol, by John Rutter. And Hark the Herald Angels Sing, by Felix Mendelssohn, arranged by David Wilcox. Produced by Cat on a Piano Productions. The theatrephonic theme tune was composed by Jackson Pentland, performed by Jackson Pentland, Molly Fife Taylor, and Emmeline Brayfield. For more information about the theatrephonic podcast, go to catonapiano.uk forward slash theatrephonic, tweet or Instagram us at theatrephonic, or visit our Facebook page. If you would like to support theatrephonic and hear interviews and behind the scenes extras, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com forward slash theatrephonic. Please don't forget to rate and review. Thank you for listening.